Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I really want to talk about something that has been going on in um, my crew coaching season. And a lot of this has to do with building a culture and getting results and the kind of results that you want to get. So I'm really excited to dive into this. Um, It's a quick story, but there's a lot of lessons that come with it. So I felt like it was really relevant to bring to the podcast. And I'm pretty sure I also brought it to my email list. Or if I didn't already, then it is going to be brought to my email list. Because like I said, it's a really good story. And I think it comes with a lot of lessons that you can kind of parse out of it. So let's dive right into it. The whole, like, just to give you a little bit of background of what happened at the beginning of this coaching season. Um... I coach crew, crew rowing, you know, Olympic style rowing. And in the fall, it's not necessarily Olympic style where they're right next to each other in lanes. It's something called a head race. It's kind of like cross country rowing is the best way for my mind to kind of understand it where essentially you would like hop on a treadmill and do a time trial and whoever got the fastest uh, time for the specific distance is whoever wins the race. Okay. So that's how the fall season works. You have a certain distance course. Whoever could do it the fastest is the one who wins the race. And so in the fall season, it typically starts the crew year for the sport. So you have the fall season, then you have the winter season, which is really done indoors because they're very rarely, unless you're living in like Southern California or Texas or Florida, you really don't have um, that great of weather to hop out on the water because you have to have a certain temperature viable conditions for you to get out on the water. If it's too cold, then you you really shouldn't go out because, you know, what if you flip, you risk the chance of hypothermia. Anyways, all of that being said, the important topic that I want to touch on here is that at the beginning of our season, the head coach of the team, and he's also the director of the program, said that when you start to get a team this big, it really matters the kind of culture that you build. And... I really didn't think much of it because I was under the impression that the kids who were going to be more involved in that were going to be his older varsity level or 2v level rowers and so I really didn't think much like of it in terms of me and my squad of kids and how culture would play a part the way that he was talking about it was that the older kids bring the culture to the younger kids and it's really interesting what wound up happening so I'm gonna I mean long story very short but it's not really that short because I feel like I've been rambling a little bit about the sport um in the beginning of this season, I told my kids, one of the best things that you can do if you have big goals for yourself and your boat is to get together and do some team bonding. When I was in college, I did a lot of team bonding. It was not necessarily because I was like, oh yeah, we should do this or we should do that. It was because when you spend so much time with people in the boat, then and you're spending so much time at practice, then you start to naturally become friends like that. And you you, you find yourself hanging out with them more and more and you become really good friends and you find yourself talking to them about all of these, you know, deep things about yourself. And it's really interesting how relationships pan out when you're doing this sport. And so I told them, one of the best things that you could do is team bonding. And one of my boats has just taken that advice and run with it and they've gone to see Barbie all together like nine of them went to go see Barbie together in the same place on the same day from different schools from different regions of the state they got together and they went to go see Barbie like that is to me really cool they are like 
sitting together playing games like Cards Against Humanity, like even though it's not really like I don't want to know. <laughs> they're like spending time together and they're laughing and they're friends and they have each other's back. And that's so important in this sport because you might be eight different people, but you are in one boat together. And it became such a big distinction at yesterday's practice because I am in charge of typically two, on average two, but sometimes I'm in charge of three boats. And the second boat hasn't been performing nearly as well as the first. So they, they're they like, well, we want to do better. and We want to get into this top boat and we want to get onto varsity, all these things. And the biggest thing that I had them do at yesterday's practice was I want all eight of you to tell me what your intention is, what your goal is for this season. And I got eight different answers in that boat. If I were to ask that other boat, there's one answer amongst the eight of them. But in this second boat, it's one boat, but there's eight different answers. And so I asked them, how many boats are there? right now as in like how many how many boats are you rowing okay I should have said it like that but I said it the other way yesterday and they're like well there are a lot of boats I was like no there really aren't and they're like what do you mean I was like there are eight of you and how many boats are you in they're like oh well we're in one boat and I said great so you have eight different goals in one boat and they're like yep And I said, where do you think this boat is going to go? And they were like, no place. And I said, that is correct. When you guys are all on the same page, when you guys are bonding together, when you guys spend time to get to know each other and to have, you know, a common goal together, where do you think you're going to go? They're like, where we want to go. And I said, yep, you can't go someplace with eight different goals in one boat. That's like having eight different cooks in the kitchen and you're supposed to make one meal. It's not going to work. Everybody wants to have their way. Everybody wants to have their say. And I'm not saying that your say is wrong or invalid. What I'm saying is if you don't work together, you're not going to go very far. And you guys aren't upset. You aren't happy. You are upset with what your results are. And you're going to sit here and point the finger but you haven't even taken the time to get to know each other or to get together or to bond with each other or to come up with a common goal. If you guys took the time to come up with a common goal, then you probably would be able to get to the point that you want to go with this boat, but you cannot do it separately. You have to do it together. And to me, it brings up a couple it brings up a lot of different things. Like there really truly is something to say about teamwork. There really truly is something to say about working together. And there really truly is something to bring and to say when, you know, you have a common goal. And that works with crews and athletes, but that also works guess where else? in business and in your personal growth journey and maybe my car will lock if I keep the key a little closer but it works in every other aspect not just in boats and if you are at the point in your business where you are hiring out it really is so important for you to get on the same page with the person who it is that you're looking to hire If both of you are on the same page, then things are going to happen a lot more efficiently and a lot more quickly, and they're going to be a hell of a lot better for you as a business owner than you ever would have thought they would have been. And I think it's really important because that is how you build a culture when you all get on the same page. Because I've had those kids from the like varsity and the second varsity squads come over to me and say, How is it possible that your kids are best friends and they're still competing for each other's seats? And I said, because I told them to bond. That was the most important. That was the first thing that I said. And those kids that are in my crews are setting the culture. 
They're the ones leading and bringing the team together. And that by far speaks volumes to parents and to the other kids on the team when they, other kids, like they, the other kids on the team, want to do really well and they want to have their boat perform really well and they get a second place medal. And they're way faster than my kids. Their erg scores are way faster than what my kids have been able to pull. But my kids have been able to perform on a course. They've gone four for four. I've had a four boat. The eight boat has gone four for four and the four boat has gone two for two. Gold medals. And I think that says a lot more than just getting a bunch of fast kids together. Because when you get a bunch of fast kids together and they don't have that culture and they don't have that bond, you know what happens? It's a cutthroat society. It's a cutthroat feeling. And they're going to talk about each other behind their backs. And they're going to, you know, start to go after each other's seats. And absolutely, do I want for the best for every person involved in my cruise? Absolutely. If there's a person in that lower boat who wants to get in the higher boat, I absolutely promote them to grow and to better themselves to be able to do it. But you have to be able to do it working with your team. You have to be able to do it working with the people in your squad. Because if you're not working with with your people, where are you working against them? So I thought it was a really interesting and cool story to bring to the podcast because there are a lot of lessons that come out of it. You know, like who's to say that just because you want a specific culture to be built, you aren't maybe necessarily involved or as involved as the other people or you know just because you say you want one thing doesn't mean that doing it is the same thing bringing that culture to fruition and talking about it are two totally separate different topics so I wanted to bring that lesson and that story and that experience to the podcast because You could probably take something out of it even for your business and even for your life, even for your personal development journey. So all I ask is that if you found this valuable, you share this podcast with a friend, you share it on social media, tag me in it with your takeaways. Um, Ratings and reviews are always helpful for the podcast. That's how the podcast gets recommended to newer audiences. And I would be so grateful for your review and for you to share it with your friends. I want to thank you for tuning in always because I really do appreciate you listening and I would really love to ask you to check out the show notes for any links that I mentioned before, whether it's my Instagram or, uh, you know, links to, I think the reviews are actually underneath. Like if you wanted to leave the review, it's underneath the, um, the show notes when you scroll sometimes. So all of that being said, thank you for tuning in and I will talk to you soon.